Good evening. Power, water rates, public transport, the cost of running your car, they're all going up tonight. What does it mean for a normal family? Well, that's the number right there, $313 a year. That's the number for a family of four, the bottom line after today's state budget. Here's the snapshot. The price for power is going up $63 a year. Water rates are up $84 a year. And buying a ticket to ride our public transport up to $91 a year. Choosing to take the car won't save you either. Car registrations are also up $75. Mike Nahan's first budget will hit every household in the state. It is a bu budget in which tough but responsible decisions have been made to secure our economic future. Power bills are going up $63 a year or 4.5%, taking the average household power bill to $1,460 a year. Water's going further, $84 a year or 6%, with the annual bill now costing families $1,490. People who are on low incomes are already struggling to keep up with the cost of living. And the price rises announced today go above and beyond what was promised by this government to keep prices within the CPI. Public transport fares will go up by more than 8%, costing the average family an extra $91 a year. However, the governments will continue to heavily subsidise electricity, water and public transport. It won't be cheaper if you drive. The government's axed the concession for car registrations, which along with hikes to licence fees, will cost an extra $75 a year. And the tax on parking bays in the CBD will skyrocket by $365. The council and business sure to pass those costs on, making parking in the city more expensive. All up, WA households will be $313 a year worse off. This is a budget of pain, hardship and dishonesty that will impact every West Australian man, woman and child. For the second year in a row, land tax has risen by 10%. This will slow down housing market activity. First home buyers will be hit. The stamp duty exemption will now only apply to houses worth up to $430,000. Today's budget is a blow to first home buyers. It's going to impose more costs and it's a blow to the industry. Spending on health and hospitals will rise by more than $440 million, including another top-up for the Fiona Stanley Hospital. But there are cuts with redevelopments to several hospitals shelved, including Sir Charles Gardner and the Joondalup Health Campus. They're also scrapping $60 million worth of upgrades to train stations and other rail infrastructure. And despite all these tough measures, debt is still set to grow from $22 billion this year to just under $30 billion in four years' time. There'll be a boost to schools. The education budget will rise by almost $190 million, which will pay for an extra 550 teachers due to start next school year. Extra 550 positions to secondary schools won't cover the increases, the massive increases that we'll have in secondary schools next year. That's on top of an extra $1.2 billion over the next four years to build 16 new primary schools and three new high schools. The government's also putting $10 million towards the Fremantle Dockers' new training centre at Coburn. And we're still paying off Perth Arena with a final confidential payment to the builders' BGC. Josh Yerger, Nine News. This Barnett budget is a tough one for families already struggling with the cost of living. We're getting a feel tonight for the reaction in the suburbs. Let's start with the north. Lee Steele is in Joondalup tonight. Lee, very much a family suburb and those increases add up. Yes, they do, Tim. And as you can imagine, the reaction here is not a happy one. A lot of people rely on trains to get into the city for work. And basically, these fare increases will be felt a lot harder here than in other areas. If you're catching a train into the city and back every day, you'll basically be up for another about $100 every year. And a lot of people that I spoke to today say that they're already struggling to cut back on water and electricity just to make ends meet. I wouldn't expect anything different from the government at the moment. I'm, I'm not happy with any of their plans. As far as I'm concerned, the money's better in our pocket than what it is like developing like the Elizabeth Key. I would still have to pay that, but then you hope that you get a wage rise and cover it, but you always, you're always juggling. I don't water the garden. I mean, in spite of all the fact that we've had uh, four months of very, very dry weather, I've had to... Um, just what I save all the water that we use. And water's up by $84 a year. Oh, 
I have to give up her in showers. <laughs> so, so this is the uh, first of the budget bad news to Western Australians, and of course we've got more on the way with the federal budget next week. Tim. Thank you, Lee. Ben Hennessy is at Carousel Shopping Centre in Cannington. Ben, what are people telling you there? Yeah, well, Tim, many of the people we spoke to today were seeing these figures for the first time. And for the most part, they were disappointed with the more than $300 hit to the hip pocket for households. The 12.5% increase in car registrations was one that particularly caught many off guard. And there was also a lot of questions about how pensioners already struggling to make ends meet will cope with these increased costs. It's going to hurt a lot of people, pensioners, me, everybody. We're not getting any extra money to pay those bills, are we? So something's got to be cut somewhere. That's a fair swipe, I reckon. That is expensive, yeah. I don't, I don't see why we have to put it up to this extent, no. It's, yeah, it's going to hurt. It's certainly going to hurt. It's a tight budget. Budget is a word a lot of people don't know, but I'm really aware of it. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it does hurt. A big impact, because we um, struggle to live on what we get now. Now, many of the people here tonight are waiting to see what impact the federal budget will have on their own budgets, and they're hoping it won't be another hit to their bottom lines. Libby.